This is Dr. Daniel Amen. I am going to talk to you for the next few minutes on brain spect made ridiculously simple. Um, it's a primer on how to read the spec scans we do here at Amen Clinics, and we've done them since 1991. And the reason was. Well, let's start earlier, 1972, I'm 18 years old, and Vietnam is still going on, and I'm an infantry medic, and that's where my love of medicine was born. But about a year into it, I realized I didn't like being shot at, so I got myself retrained as an x-ray technician and developed a passion for medical imaging. As our professors used to say, how do you know unless you look? And then in 1979, I'm a second year medical student and someone I love tried to kill herself. And I took her to see a wonderful psychiatrist. And I came to realize if he helped her, which he did, it wouldn't just help her. It would help everybody in her family, including generations. So I fell in love with psychiatry because I realized it had the possibility to change generations of people. But I fell in love with the only medical specialty that never looks at the organ it treats. And in 1991, I went to a lecture on brain spect imaging. And if you take spect, and combine it with psychiatry, it really created a revolution in my life. The doctor who taught me about SPECT said, it's a tool to give psychiatrists more information to help their patients. And so um, SPECT basically tells us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. And then our job, is to balance the brain. So the image on the left, we're looking down from the top, shows full, even, symmetrical activity. The color's not important, it's the shape that matters. And it helps us see healthy and low areas of activity. The image on the right is what we call our active scans, where blue is average activity, and red, or sometimes you'll see red and white, are the most active parts of the brain. And typically in a healthy scan, they're in the back bottom part of the brain because the cerebellum, 10% of the brain's volume, and it has half of the brain's neurons. And so on spec, it is typically uh, the most active part of the brain. And I got really excited about the imaging technology, so you can see healthy versus someone who had two strokes. SPECT was actually initially designed to look at vascular function in the brain. Um, so the real reason not to smoke is it increases your risk of strokes. Um, SPECT at the time, um, even currently, was one of the best studies to look at Alzheimer's disease. There hundreds of studies on Alzheimer's disease, on tens of thousands of patients. And the pattern is bilateral, just means both sides, um, decreases in the parietal lobe, top back part of your brain, and the temporal lobes. Um, so it's the back half of your brain is dying. One of the big lessons I've learned from imaging is that mild traumatic brain injury ruins people's lives and nobody knows about it. And there's so many different patterns for imaging that we'll talk about, but your brain is very soft about the consistency of soft butter. Your skull is really hard and has multiple sharp bony ridges and your brain is just easily damaged. 40% of the patients who come to Amen Clinics, um, they had a significant brain injury in their past. And many people, they just have no idea that that is associated with a high percentage of people who have mental health challenges. Drug abuse, what we see is this pattern we call scalloping, um, overall decreased perfusion in the brain. Um, and drugs and alcohol, and we'll talk about other causes of this. So the real reason not to use drugs 
is they damage your brain. So when I saw these awful scans, I brought them home to my four children and effectively induced anxiety disorders in all four of them. Um, but what about when the brain works too hard? We often see that in OCD where the front part of your brain works too hard in seizure activity where we'll see a focal hotspot in the brain and SPECT initially was used for patients who had seizure disorders. Um, and you know, one of the questions that I get asked is, well, I can tell clinically. And I'm like, really? How can you tell clinically what is going on in someone's brain? Um, so, no, you can't. Um, SPEC scans help you see the underlying physiology of a patient's brain. So it tells you if it works too hard or not hard enough, if there's a toxic pattern or if there's trauma. SPEC, one of the big lessons we learned is it taught us that all psychiatric illnesses, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, autism, ADHD, um, addictions are not single or simple disorders. They all have multiple types. And so I've written books on ADHD and addiction and anxiety and depression and obesity. Um, you have to know what type their brain is because that helps to target treatment. Um, SPEC scans help you see if there's been trauma. Again, remember, 40% of patients um, the effects of chemotherapy are not good on your brain. Even infections like herpes or Lyme disease, we can often see the chronic damage. Um, often I'll tell us if our medications are toxic. This is why I don't prescribe benzos hardly at all anymore because they cause overall low blood flow to the brain. It sort of looks like some of our drug abusers. Um, the SPEC scans help us prevent mistakes, such as you never want to stimulate a brain that's working too hard or calm down a brain that is underactive. That can precipitate a disaster. Or in this boy, a 17-year-old boy who wanted to cut his mother up into little pieces, he had a huge cyst the size of a tennis ball in the left hemisphere of his brain. And he'd seen six psychiatrists, was in residential treatment, drug treatment, failed all of those. And, you know, the thing I always say is, how do you know unless you look? Scans help addicts in so many ways. I mean, one, it breaks denial. It can increase compliance. People want a better brain. Um, it helps us understand comorbidity, like head trauma or toxins. You can do follow-up scans. It's the biggest lesson we've learned. You're not stuck with the brain you have. You can make it better. And we use it in education and prevention. Our drug education poster actually hangs in about 100,000 schools around the world. Spec scans, and I love this, it decreases stigma. Um, because people see their problems as medical and not moral, it decreases shame, guilt, self-loathing and anger. It increases compassion and forgiveness for their families. Um, it increases compliance. We have nothing else in psychiatry that is this powerful or this immediate. Um, scans help people know their brains can change. You're not stuck with the brain you have. You can make it better. This is a mixed martial artist patient before and literally two and a half hours later after we put him on a cocktail of supplements that we created specially for him. Now, it didn't mean his brain was going to stay better. He had to take them over time, but you are not stuck with the brain you have. The SPEC scans completely change the discussion about mental health. What I learned early on as a psychiatrist, nobody wants to see a psychiatrist. No one wants to be labeled as defective or abnormal, but everybody wants a better brain when they understand it. So we should always talk about what if mental health was really brain health. Get your brain right and your mind will follow. Stay tuned for part two. And I'm going to actually show you some patterns and some treatments.